those two together, okay, then both of those are in series with the next inner coil. Okay? What? So... Once again, everyone. So today I have what I think is one of the coolest features of the Bowden Essential, uh, the Strandberg guitar. Um, that's kind of a hidden thing. Um, maybe most people aren't aware of it or don't really think about it. Um, but for me, it's turning out to be just unbelievably cool. Because as you know, I typically would play... Um, single coil Telecaster style guitars and there's a unique factor with the neck pickup on those guitars where it's dark and bright at the same time so it has like certain characteristics tonally like it's open sounding but it also has a certain response that's just different than any other guitar if you're a Telecaster style player you would actually like this guitar, believe it or not, um, because it gives you actually those sounds plus extra sounds. Uh, but that's not really what I'm here to talk about. I'm talking about what I think is the Bowden Essentials secret weapon. Okay. The secret weapon. So what it is, is the middle position. Okay. The middle pickup. I'm going to tell you exactly what this is. The specs of their off their website the of the wiring. So the position three, the middle. It's the bridge series in you know typical humbucking. So like the the bridge pickup full on like you would expect. You've got the neck outer coil, okay. And uh, that is in parallel with this pickup, okay. <laughs> By your powers combined. Um, and then with those two together, okay, then both of those are in series with the next inner coil. Okay? What? So, <laughs> what this actually does um, is it gives you... So, like I was reading comments about this because I was I was fascinated to be to see like who came up with this. I can't find any information on it currently. I, I should probably ask Ola. You know, like, you know, some people have commented online that the, the the middle position sounds just like the neck pickup. It does have some of the characteristics of this, uh, which is good if you play jazz or or any kind of music where you are not really going for a bright sound, you're going for more of a full-bodied sound, right? Like a good clean or something. Not really like a clean that you would use as like 
backing something on a rock track that's ambient or something. But this is more like, you know, like the electric guitars, a version of an acoustic, a good acoustic tone. It's kind of what the neck, a good neck pickup sound is, which is why a lot of jazz box type things like fo focus around that pickup is because it's kind of what I just described. It's like the full bodied electric sound that's akin to an acoustic sound and like where is the the sound hole on an acoustic guitar it's up near the neck pickup right so anyway some some people have commented that the neck sounds similar to the middle position so what's happening here is that you get the articulation of the bridge for certain things so I'm going to demonstrate here in a minute, you know, some, some different things. So what you end up getting is um, you can get some funky kind of thick, um, quacky tones with different articulations on the lower strings for like slapping and snapping strings and things like that. Um, but at the same time, it still has the body. It still has the body there. Um which is an amazing thing for me. Like it's spread out. It's got a more spread out kind of a sound. Um, it's kind of like a bigger, more evolved version of the middle position on a Telecaster. But um, anyway, so one of the things you run into when you're doing two handed tapping like me is that when you go up higher on the neck, what ends up happening is if you're on your neck pickup, um, things start to get weird sometimes, you know, depending on the pickup. That's what I liked about the Telecaster neck pickups because they're single coil. They have like a thinner um, band where they pick up the string vibration. The result is that it knocks off some of the, the, the low end that's noise producing. That's like clashing with other things, especially when you start playing really high and low at the same time. This actually solves the problem because you get the power, the articulation, the bridge humbucker, plus some of the darkness of the neck. And because it's split in series and parallel with this weird thing, um, you get some of the single coil hollowness too. Like the hollow, I don't know how to describe this, like the tone has that hollow characteristic while simultaneously having the thick characteristic of the humbucker. I hope that that makes sense. You know, it's kind of, it's kind of difficult to explain uh, without just actually showing you. So let's mess around here. So here is, here is just the uh, middle position, right? I'm just going to play some low stuff here. Okay, now if I switch over to the neck, right? They're pretty similar, right? You can kind of hear a little bit of high end. There's just a little high end, kind of a hollow quack kind of a sound. But the body's there, so like if I switch to a different position... That's the bridge by itself. You can definitely see it's thinner. It has more of a tinny kind of a quality to it, which is good if you're going for any typical humbucker bridge stuff or even like a telly bridge sound. I mean, like the, the coil split here. Definitely strat, quacky, kind of an in-between kind of a sound. Obviously, the, um, the neck outer coil. Just kind of a slightly darker version of that. Um, but the difference comes in when I start messing around like up here. Okay, so I don't know if you can hear this. So some people may not interpret it exactly the same. Um, I, I really... I really should have um, put, you know, put on the uh, lapel mic for this, but um, so. 
so it it has um both characteristics right of like your neck kind of a a darker jazz sound as well as the brighter um function of the bridge so you get the best of both worlds basically it's more of a full range sound um but it's still dark it still has like the the dark body to it as opposed to it just being this real bright thing that you know so it still has this kind of jazz characteristic i'll, I'll like i'll like demonstrate by switching a little bit here and playing some different stuff So that's the middle. So let's go to the, do the same kind of thing on the neck. So they're very close. Um, you know, I mean, obviously, you can always switch over to the neck for you know that specific tone if you're looking for it. But when you're playing all over the entire fingerboard, I've just noticed that it's just it's just like it's almost like if you play a certain amount of like if you play harder the brightness increases a little bit if you're kind of, you know, and vice versa in different parts of the neck, but it balances itself out. It's really cool. Um, so like if I'm playing cluster chords, you, you can hear them much clearer on the middle position as opposed to just the neck by itself. Um, and then also like, like if I'm way down there with the left hand and way up here, um, there's a differentiation like they don't clash with each other it has more of the the separation that you get with a single coil but no hum <laughs> and also the the frequencies are not rubbing into each other like you would get on a humbucker guitar as much you know like there again there's like that single coil separation is is still there i'll kind of like d demonstrate this can hear um how useful the separation is when i start doing stuff that's more um like simultaneous like contrapuntal 
you can automatically like tell straight away. It just it makes it easier to get a good sound with your left hand while your right is doing something. Um, I could go on and on and on about this and, and get more in depth with it, but I'm just kind of giving you an overview and kind of, um, I don't know if you're interested in, in two handed typing, um, Anyway, I kind of went a little bit 20th century there, um, but it's just like so fast. Um, also, the response, like um, the response time. I don't know if that, that, I don't know how this translates to something that um, you could talk about in terms of acoustical physics, but like these guitars in general have like a faster response time. They, they're, um, a lot of other guitars, like you plug it into some, some kind of amp and it, it seems like there's a latency or something. Like the frequencies or the tone or the vibration. I don't know what it is, but it's like there's a latency. There's like a little bit of a delay in something or, or whatever. These are just like instantaneous. I think anybody that's played one for a while knows what I'm talking about. Um um, but you know, like being able to get, well, having the really flat fingerboard and having to be able to get your action fairly low and stuff without fretting out when you bend and stuff too. Um, yeah, <laughs> I thought, um, I would just talk about this and gush a little bit and I keep looking at my monitor, by the way, in case you wonder what I'm looking at. I'm not crazy. Um, so, uh, yeah, I'm just going to play some more stuff and, um. See how that goes.